Hi everyone and welcome to this update brought to you by the Super Data Science team. We're going to be examining and discussing the new update to one of our favorite libraries used for visualizations when working with data, whether it's in data science, machine learning, artificial intelligence, etc. Or maybe you just want to build some really cool graphs. Why not? What could you guess this library might be? What are we referring to? It is Seaborn. And for those of you who are not too familiar with Seaborn, if you do have a chance, we also have a series on working with Seaborn here on YouTube. So feel free to scroll through, take a look. But let's get back to the update. And this update is referring to the release of version 0.9. And we're going to see with 0.9 the introduction of three new plotting functions that are the rel plot, scatter plot, and my favorite would be the line plot of this update. I'm a big fan of this plot since it's very simple and clean with the visualization and it's also a great tool if you're trying to prototype build a quick analysis between variables in the data if you want to visit the notes on seaborn and the update of 0.9 you can find them at the following link but for the purpose of our exploration i set up a jupyter notebook that we're going to take a look through so we can examine a little more in detail and some interesting information one about the library and about the update as well so let's jump into the jupyter notebook So with our Seaborn update of 0.9, we mentioned that we have the rel plot built in, the scatter plot, and the line plot. And we can see here the ease of calling. If you worked with Seaborn before, you know how easy it is to actually call the plot. Since we're working with the rel plot here, you would call SNS as we imported Seaborn as SNS to the rel plot. Makes this visualization very clear for your data, your representative data. And if you are looking to experiment, you can always jump on Seaborn as they have the built-in data sets here we're using the mpg data set for the scatter plot we are using the exercise data set and for the line plot we are using the flights data set these are all pre-built into seaborn that you can call just by passing in the name of the load data set of flights here some additional notes that i also want to mention is that the new line plot function that we can see here also supports statistical estimation and will replace the TS plot function. But the TS plot function, although it is going to be replaced by line plot, it hasn't been removed yet. It is marked to be removed in a later release. So it's still able to be using TS plot. With the 0.9 update, we can really see that Seaborn is moving to be more aligned with matplotlib to make it more consistent, flexible, and have clearer documentation. In addition, we also have the color palette updates with Seaborn that were built to take advantage of the recent changes in matplotlib as well. If you're ever looking and working with Seaborn, you can always call the color palettes with the following command. You want to use the pal plot, the color palette, and gives you the options. And similar to matplotlib, Seaborn also gives you the options of adjusting colors. This is just an example. You feel free to play around with the values for some further information, but it just gives you those varying degrees of customization, something that we really want when we're working with our visualizations to build them even further, to have clear graphs representing our data. Also, there was the renaming of the factor plot to cat plot and the LV plot to box and plot. If you want to dive further to see the more details about the API changes, again, if you visit, the seaborn.pydata.org slash what's new. If you dive into the API changes, you will find some further details about some of the parameter changes, adjusting the size parameter in multi-plot grid objects, and etc. But the overall takeaway is the introduction of three new graphs, the new relational plots, the rel plot, scatter plot, and line plot the update to our themes and palettes within Seaborn to be more consistent and to take advantage of matplotlib and API changes in addition to documentation improvement and bug fixes. Overall, it's great to see since working with Seaborn is such a pleasure. It's a very useful library working in data science. It makes it easy to build our prototypes and plot these relations between variables. If you're looking to work with a library in the future, I highly recommend using Seaborn. If you're looking for some additional information on working with these types of plots, again, I'd recommend examining our Seaborn series, the notes and examples within the Seaborn documentation, and even experimenting with the visualizations built into this notebook. 
feel free to experiment with the values, test other data sets, change the color palettes, adjust the sizes of the plots as well. Remember, Seaborn is built off of matplotlib to give you a hint on adjusting some of the parameters and explore this further. I did add in some notes from the update provided to us by Seaborn. So you can explore the notes further. They both have some updates, some highlights on some key points of these updates. Overall, I hope that this helped understand some changes to the new Seaborn update with version 0.9. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to share them. Subscribe to the Super Data Science channel where you will get up to date information related to the data science industry. Just a great tool to stay informed on what's going on and good luck and enjoy Seaborn.